Good evening, sir. Good evening. I don't know if I'm... Yes, you are expected. It is Colonel Mustard, isn't it? No, that's not my name. My name is Colonel... Excuse me. Forgive me. I'm afraid we must use fake names for the evening. Please come in. Sorry I'm late. Had some uh, business to attend to. Quite all right. May I take your coat? Follow me, sir. Is this place for you? Oh, indeed no, sir. I am but a humble butler. And what exactly do you do? I butler, sir. Which means what? I am in charge of the kitchen and the dining room. I keep everything tight, that is all. Hello, everyone. This is Colonel Mustard. Let me make some formal introductions. This is Mrs. White, Mr. Green, Professor Plum, Miss Scarlet, and Mrs. Peacock. Oh, and may I introduce you all to Yvette, the maid. Oh, I see you two know each other. Well, someone's got to break the ice, and it might as well be me. It's difficult for new friends to get together to be acquainted, but I'm prepared to start the ball rolling. Thank you. I mean, I have absolutely no idea what we're doing here, or what I'm doing here, but I am very intrigued. Oh my, this is delicious, isn't it? This is one of my favorite recipes. I know, madam. Look, Wadsworth, I, like Mrs. Peacock, am also confused. I demand to know why we've been dragged up here to this terrible place. Well, I believe we all received a letter. My letter says that it will be to your advantage to be present on this date because a Mr. Body will bring an end to a long-standing, confidential, and painful financial liability. It was signed, a friend. I also received a letter. So did we, didn't we? Forgive my curiosity, Mr. Body, but did your letter say the same thing? No. I see. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been instructed to tell you what you all have in common with one another. Unless you care to do the honors, Mr. Body. Why me? They know who I am. I don't think so. You've never identified yourself to them. It's a hoax. I suggest we all leave. I'm sorry, sir. You cannot leave this house. No, who's gonna stop me? There's no way out. All the doors are locked and all the windows have bars. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please. Please return to the study. Everything will be explained. Give me the key. Over my dead body, sir. Return to the study. Ladies and gentlemen, you all have one thing in common. You're all being blackmailed. For some considerable time, you've been paying what you can afford, and in some cases, more than you can afford to someone who's trying to expose you. And none of you know who the blackmailer is, do you? Anyone wish to deny it? Very well. As everyone here is in the same boat, it's no harm in revealing some details, and I'm instructed to do so. Thank you, Yvette.
Don't you think you might spare us this humiliation? I'm sorry. Professor Plum, you were once a pharmacist specializing in paranoid and homicidal lunatics suffering from delusions of grandeur. Yes, but now I work for the United Nations. So your work has not changed. But you don't practice medicine at the UN. His license to practice was lifted, correct? Why? What did he do? He was a drug dealer, supplying prescription drugs. He would write prescriptions to anyone who could supply the cash. Oh, how sickening! Are you making moral judgments, Mrs. Peacock? How then do you justify taking bribes for delivering your husband, Senator Peacock's vote to certain lobbyists? How then would you describe that? Well, I'm being blackmailed for something I didn't do. Me too. And me. Not me. You're not being blackmailed? Oh, I'm being blackmailed, all right. But I did what I'm being blackmailed for. What did you do? Well, to be perfectly frank, I'm guilty of vehicle manslaughter while under the influence. It all happened so fast, I drove off never telling a soul. How can you live with yourself? Colonel, you have no room for judgment, considering that you stole essential radio parts from the war and sold them on the black market. You earned a killing. No wonder you drive such an expensive car on a colonel's pay. Are you trying to make me look stupid in front of the other guests? Don't need any help from me, sir. That's right. Now, Mrs. White, you've been paying our friend the blackmailer ever since your husband died under, shall we say, mysterious circumstances? I didn't kill him. Then why are you paying the blackmailer? I don't want a scandal, do I? We had had a very humiliating public confrontation. He was deranged, lunatic. He didn't actually seem to like me very much. He had threatened to kill me in public. Why would he want to kill you in public? I think she means he threatened in public to kill her. Oh. Well, was that his final word on the matter? Being killed is pretty final, wouldn't you say? Yet he was the one who died, not you, Mrs. White. Not you. Well, yes. He was found dead at home. His head had been cut off. I had been out all evening at the movies. Do you miss him? Well, it's a matter of life after death. Now that he's dead, I have a life. I have something to say. I'm not going to wait for Wadsworth here to unmask me. I work for the State Department and am responsible for a multitude of bank robberies over the past seven months. Someone uncovered my identity and threatens to turn me over to the police. Out of all the people in this room, you were the last one I would have expected to be a criminal mastermind. Very funny. Well, that just leaves Mr. Body. What's your little secret? His secret? Hadn't you guessed it? He's the one blackmailing you all. Crook! Put him up! Wait! Wait! The police are coming! What? what? That's outrageous! Listen! Blackmail depends on secrecy, and you've all admitted how he's been able to blackmail you. So tell the police he'll be convicted and all your troubles will be over. It's not so easy. You'll never tell the police. Then I will. I have evidence in my possession, and this. Conversation is being tape recorded. Where are you going this time? I think I can help them make up their minds. I'm just gonna grab my little bag from the hall. We didn't know we were meeting you tonight. Did you know you were meeting us? Oh, yes. Follow me. Bag. Surprises, my friends. Surprises. Open them. Take a seat. So what precisely did your letter say? Merely that you were meeting to discuss our little financial arrangements. And if I did not appear, why is it worth being informing the police about it all? Naturally, I can hardly resist to make an appearance. Open them. Why not? Candlestick. What's this for?
In your hands, each of you have a lethal weapon. If you denounce me to the police, you will be exposed and humiliated. And I will see to that in court. But, if one of you kills Wadsworth now, no one but the seven of us will ever know. He has the key to the front door, which he said would only be opened over his dead body. I suggest we take him up on that offer. The only way to avoid finding yourselves on the front pages is for one of you to kill Wadsworth. Now. It's not Wadsworth. It's Mr. Body. Is he alive? Stand back. Give him air. Let me see. He's dead. Who had the gun? I did. Then you killed him. I didn't. Well, you had the gun. If you didn't kill him, who did? Nobody. Look, there's no bullet hole. Somebody tried to grab the gun from me in the dark and it went off. Look, there's the bullet hole. He's absolutely right. There is a bullet hole in the wall. Then how did he die? I don't know! Well, somebody must have killed him. I need a drink! Maybe he was poisoned! Ah! 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 Mrs. Peacock, it's ah! alright! It's alright, ah! we don't know anything! Ah! Calm down! Ah! Calm down! Ah! <gasps> I... I had to stop her screaming. Was the brandy poisoned? I don't know. Unless... Unless she dies too. Where's it coming from? The library! You're alive! If no thanks to you. What do you mean? You locked me up with the murder, you idiot. But why were you screaming in here all by yourself? Because I'm frightened. One of you is the killer. I can't stay in here by myself. Come back to the study with us. This is ridiculous. Is there no indication of how he died? No. This is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. This is not what I had intended. Not what you intended. So you're not the butler? I'm not the butler. I'm a butler. In fact, I was his butler. The truth is, I invited you. I wrote the letters. It was all my idea. Wait a minute. I, I don't understand. Why did you invite us here to meet your late employer? Were you assisting him to blackmail us? Certainly not. I think you had better explain. When I said I was Mr. Body's butler, this was both true and misleading. I was once his butler, but it was not his untimely death this evening that brought my employment with him to an end. When did it come to an end? When my wife decided to end her life. She too was being blackmailed by this odious man who now lies dead before us. So, what was your role in all this? To make a long story short... Too late. The suicide of my wife preyed on my mind and created a sense of injustice in me. I was resolved to put Mr. Body behind bars. It seemed the best way to do it. And to free all of you from the same burden of blackmail was to get everyone face to face, confront Mr. Body with his crimes, and then turn him over to the police. So everything is now explained. Nothing's explained. We still don't know who killed him. Well, the point is we better find out in the next 18 minutes before the police arrive. My goodness, they can't come here now. But. How do you suppose we find out which one of you did it? What do you mean, which one of you did it? Well, I didn't do it. Well, one of us did. We all had a motive. Maybe it wasn't one of us. Well, who else could it have been? Who else is in the house? Only, Only the me. cook. The cook! <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but... I think you better explain yourself, Wadsworth. Me? Why me? Who would want to kill the cook? Dinner wasn't that bad. How can you be making jokes at a time like this? It's my defense mechanism. Some defense. If I was the killer, I would kill you next. Oh? 
I said if. If. Who are the dagger anyway? It was you, Mrs. Peacock, wasn't it? Yes, but I put it down. Where? In the master bedroom. When? Uh, before Mr. Buddy died, after Mr. Buddy died. I don't remember, but any of you could have picked it up. Hmm. Look, I suggest we move the cook's body to the master bedroom. Why? I'm the butler. I like to keep the kitchen tidy. Nothing. Well, who's there? Nobody. 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 That's what we mean. Mr. Body's body. It's gone. Maybe he wasn't dead. He was. We should have made sure. How? By cutting off his head, I suppose? That was uncalled for. Where is he? Well, let's go look for him. Well, he couldn't have been dead. He was. At least I thought he was. What difference does it make now? It makes quite a difference to him. Um, well, if you'll excuse me, I need to, um, is there a ladies' room? Wait, wait, madam. No, I just need a powder my nose. Well, maybe Mr. Body killed the cook. Yes! How? Uh, Mr. Body, dead again, and with new injuries. Well, he's certainly dead now. Who would want to kill him twice? Seems so unnecessary. Unless he wasn't dead before. What's the difference? That's what we're trying to find out. We're trying to find out who killed him, where, and with what. There's no need to shout. I'm not shouting. All right, I am. Well, let's take the cook's body and Mr. Body's body into the study. I have an idea. Careful, don't get blood on the sofa. Mrs. White, why did you put him in that position? I wanted to make him look comfortable. Everybody listen up. What? Wadsworth, am I right in thinking that there is no one else in this house? Um, no. So then there is someone else in the house? I'm sorry, I said no meaning yes. No meaning yes? Look, I want a straight answer. Either there is someone in this house or there isn't. Yes or no? No. No there is or no there isn't? Yes? Please, stop! Well, there's still some confusion as to whether or not there's someone in this house or not. I told you there isn't! There isn't any confusion or there isn't anyone in the house? Either. Or both. Look, I just want a straight answer. Certainly! <clears throat> what was the question again? Is there anybody else in this house? No! That's what he said. But does he know? I suggest we handle this in proper military fashion. We split up and search the house. Split up? Yes, we're running out of time. We'll split up into pairs. Wait a minute. If one of us is the killer, whichever one goes with the killer might get killed. Then we'll have discovered who the murderer is. But then the other half would be dead. Colonel, are you willing to take that chance? What choice have we? None. I suppose you're right. I suggest we draw lots for partners. Ready? The two shortest together, the next two shortest together, agreed? I suggest the two shortest search the cellar and so on up. Me and you, honey bunch. Oh my. Colonel Mustard, Miss Scarlet, can you stay on this floor? Mrs. Peacock, Professor Plum, the cellar's down the hall to the left. Mr. Green and Yvette, 
if you would be kind enough to follow me upstairs. I have nothing to hide. I didn't do it. The key. Thank you. Good evening. I found an abandoned car down by the road, and I was wondering if the driver came in here looking for help. I'm sorry, sir. I'm afraid he didn't. We had no idea. Have a nice evening. Wait! Can I use your phone? Yes, of course. <laughs> May you care to come in? Thank you. So, where is it? What, the body? The phone? What body? There, there's nobody. There's, there's nobody here. There's, there's nobody in the study. No! <laughs> but I think there's a phone in the office. Thank you. Well, you all seem pretty anxious about something. Oh, oh, no, not at all, sir. Uh, we're, we're just a bit tired, that's all. It's been quite the evening. Well, it's nice that the storm's starting to pass over. Huh? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Would you care to go this way? Thank you. <clears throat> There's the phone. Once you finish your call, if you would be kind enough to stay here. Certainly. Thank you. I locked him in. What? what? We have to buy as much time as we can. We haven't finished searching the house yet. Well, we're running out of time. Only 10 minutes before the police come. The police already came. Shut, Shut up! up! Let's get on with it. Let's see. That way to the attic. Do you want to go in front of me? Absolutely no. I'm sure there's no one up there. Then you go in the front. All right. Well, ladies first. Oh no, you go first. No, no, I insist. You go first. No, no, I insist. You go first. Well, what are you afraid of? A fate worse than death? No, just death. Isn't that enough? Are you going in there? Yes. Are you? Yes. Right. Right. I don't see any light switches in there. Neither do I, but there must be switches somewhere. We're going to come in with you. No! I mean, no thank you. Just checking. Everything all right? Yep, two corpses. Everything's fine. Gone. I'll be right behind you. That's why I'm nervous. Then we go together. Don't touch me! Hello? Hello? 
Did they recognize me? They must have. There's something funny going on around here. No, I don't know what it is. No, I'm not on duty. But I have a feeling that I'm in danger. You know that, that big early house on top? Hello? Hello? Are you there? Two murders. Neither of them shot. I thought I heard a gun. So did I. So did I. I thought I heard the front door slam. I forgot to lock the door after the cop arrived. <gasps> oh no, he must have ran out. <laughs> Three murders. Five altogether. This is getting serious. No gun. Mr. Green left it here. Very well. I know who did it. You, you do? do? Furthermore, I'm going to tell you how. Follow me. In order to explain what happened, I'm going to have to take you through the events of this evening step by step. Now, at the start of the evening, the cook was here, preparing appetizers. Any bet was in the library. I was in the hall. I know, because I was there. And then, the doorbell rang. And to make a long story short, Two late. you all came here one by one and settled down in the study. After you were all introduced, Yvette walked in, I noticed that Mrs. White and Yvette flinched, and then there was a rumble of thunder and a crash of lightning. And then you all re revealed that you received a letter, and 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 you received a letter. Get off of this! The point is blackmail! All of this came from the master bedroom. You're right! <laughs> Mrs. Peacock sat here, and then Mr. Green sat there, Professor Plum sat there. Get off of this! I'm getting there, I'm getting there! And then Mr. Body ran to the hall and grabbed the surprise packages. All open your presents, and then Mr. Body switched off the lights. And Mr. Body lay on the ground apparently dead. He was. I examined him. Then why was he bashed on the head with a candlestick a few minutes later if he was already dead? All right, I made a mistake. Right. But why was Mr. Body pretending to be dead? It could only be that he realized that his plan had misfired and the gunshot was meant for him, not me. Look, the bullet grazed his earlobe. Clearly, the best way of escaping death was pretending to be dead. So whoever grabbed the gun from me in the dark was trying to kill him. And don't forget what happened next. While we were in the master bedroom, Mrs. Peacock took a drink, and you said, ah, it could be poison, and then Mrs. Ah! Green sat her down because ah! she was screaming. Ah! I had to stop her screaming. And then, more screaming, Yvette, the library! But one of us wasn't here. No. No? No. Maybe one of us was murdering the cook, who wasn't here. Do you know? I do! 
I'm gonna try to stop Yvette from panicking. One of us gonna save the next event, pick up the dagger, and run her down the hallway, and killed the cook! How could he have fixed it? Anyone could see him running down the hallway. Aha! Not if he used the secret passageway. <gasps> Follow me to the kitchen. Is that where it leads? What? So then, the murderer came in here from the master bedroom, stabbed the cook with a dagger, and then took the secret passageway to reunite with the group in the library. How did he know about the secret passage? This house belongs to a friend of mine. I've known all along. So you could be the murderer. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. If I were the murderer, why would I reveal to you how I did it? understand was, why was the cook murdered? Was he working for Mr. Body too? Of course he did. I gathered you all here because you were all implicated in Mr. Body's dastardly blackmail. Did none of you deduce that the others were involved too? What others? The cook and Yvette. No! That's how he got his information. Before he could blackmail anyone, he had to discover the guilty secret. The cook and Yvette were his accomplices. I see. So... Whoever knew that the cook was involved killed him? Yes. You! You recognized the vet, didn't you? Don't deny it! What do you mean, don't deny it? I'm not denying any- Ha! Another denial! All right, it's true. I knew a vet. She lived a few doors down from me. A real busybody, if you ask me. But still, we were good neighbors. And you knew her too, Mr. Green. Yes, she was at one of the banks I robbed. Ah, so she could have identified you, gave the information to Mr. Body so he could have blackmailed you, so he had the motive. You both had a motive. But where and when was Mr. Body killed? I'll show you. Look, he came in from the study. Mr. Body laid on the ground pretending to be dead. Somebody realized that he was still alive. So I explained to you that I was a bug and I invited you all here and then we realized there was still one other person in the house. The cop! Yes, but the person who knew he was still alive stayed here and Mr. Body jumped up, and then the murderer runs over, grabs the candlestick, and Mr. Body, looking for an escape, runs down the hallway, the kills him, comes up behind him, and boom, kills him. Will you stop that? No. Then he throws him in the toilet. Then the killer nonchalantly rejoins us beside the cooked body in the kitchen. It took less than half a minute. So who wasn't there the entire time with us in the kitchen? Whoever it was is the murderer. Now, let's look at the other murders. Yes. Bad luck that the singing telegram girl arrived at that moment. It wasn't luck. I invited her. You did? Of course. It's obvious. Everyone here tonight is either Mr. Body's victim or accomplice. Everyone who died gave vital information about one of you. I got them here so they'd give evidence against him and force him to confess. Oh yeah? What about that singing telegram girl? What kind of information did she have? She was my patient once. She was aware of my drug business. Evidently, she told Mr. Body to. That's how I lost my license. Well, let's put her in the study with the others. So, what about that cop? Was he working for Mr. Body too? He knew about my driving accident. I bribed him once a week to keep him and his partner, now known as Mr. Body, from turning me over to the authorities. Ugh. Oh, please. So that's why they were all killed. Whoever killed Mr. Body wanted his accomplices dead too. But how did the murderer know about them all? I'll admit that I had guessed that that young singer had informed on me to Mr. Body, but I didn't know anything about all of you until this evening. When we returned to find Mr. Body dead, again, we followed Colonel Mustard's suggestion and split up and searched the house. That's right, it was Colonel Mustard's suggestion. And one of us got away from his or her partner and hurried back here to the study. And during Mr. Body and Colonel Mustard's commotion, I laid the papers here on the desk. They contained letters and photographs evidence of Mr. Body's network of informants. Where are the papers now? They're missing. So what happened next? The doorbell rang. It was the cop. And then we locked him in the office. And then we split for good. And then the murderer ran. Switched off the electricity. Oh my. <laughs> Not again. Turn on the lights. Sorry. Didn't mean to frighten anyone. You're a bit late for that. I hate it when he does that. <laughs> and then there were three more murders. So, so who did it? it? Let's consider each murder one by one. Professor Plum, 
You knew Mr. Body was still alive. Even a pharmacist knows the difference between a patient who's alive or dead. You fired at him in the dark, and you missed. You pretended he was dead. So then you could kill him later, unobserved. That's right, he was the missing person in the kitchen after we found the cook dead. But he was with us in the library when we found Yvette screaming. If that's when the cook was killed, how did he do it? I didn't do it! You don't expect us to believe that, do you? I expect you to believe it. You killed the cook. He was once your cook. He informed on you to Mr. Body. You made one fatal mistake. Sitting here, Mrs. Peacock said she was eating one of her favorite recipes, and monkey brains, being very popular in Cantonese cuisine, is not to be found in Washington, D.C. Did it have gluten in it? Well, how did I know about the secret passageway? The same reason I knew. A variety of parties are held here. You must have been here before with your husband, the Senator, and it was obviously revealed to you. Now, Colonel Mustard, I know why you were late tonight. Oh, really? You said you were late because apparently you had some business to take care of, and one of the accomplices I invited tonight didn't make it here, and the cop informed us that there was an abandoned car down by the road. You killed her, didn't you? Yes, she was my secretary. And what was she holding over you? She knew I was a war profiteer and overheard a variety of conversations I had with my clients. Her car broke down tonight, and when I passed her, I recognized her. And you can guess the rest. Wow, you're good. This is incredible. Not as incredible as what happened next. After we split up, I went upstairs with you. Yes, you, Mrs. White. While I was in the guest bedroom, you ran downstairs, shut off the electricity, you ran to the kitchen, and grabbed the rope. And then, you chuckled Yvette. I did it. I admit it. I killed Yvette. I hated her so much. It flames, flames on the sides of my face, breathing, breathing, heaving breaths, heaving, heaving. But while you were in the dining room, Miss Scarlet seized the opportunity under the cover of darkness. She got to the office where she hit the cop whom she'd been bribing on the head with a lead pipe, like that. But the door was locked. How could I have gotten in? Easy. You pickpocketed the key from my pocket after I locked him in right before we searched the house. True or false? True. This is unbelievable. So it must have been Mr. Green who shot the singing telegram. I didn't do it. Well, there's nobody else left. But I didn't do it. The gun, it's missing. I chucked it in the foyer when we ran to find the cook. Whoever's got the gun shot the girl. I shot her. You? you. So it was you. I was going to expose you. I know. So I chose to expose myself. Please, there are ladies present. You thought Mr. Body was dead. Why? None of you met him until tonight. You're Mr. Body! Ha <laughs> ha! Wait a minute! Then who did I kill? My butler. Oh, shucks. He was expendable. Like all of you, I'm grateful for you all disposing of my network of spies and informants. Saved me a lot of trouble. Now there's no evidence against me. But the police will be here any minute. None of you will get away with this. Why would the police come? Nobody's called them. You mean, oh my goodness, of course! So why shouldn't we get away with it? We'll stack the bodies in the cellar, lock it, leave quietly one at a time, and forget this whole thing ever happened. So you're just going to continue to blackmail us? Of course. Why not? I'll tell you why not. Good shot, Mr. Green. Very good. Are you a cop? FBI. The real Mr. Green turned himself in and told us of his mysterious letter. I took his spot to discover the truth. I told you I didn't do it. All right, who done it? Oh, she she it the it he was, well, she 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 the they all did it. But if you want to know who killed Mr. Body, I did. In the hall with the revolver. 
Take him away, Chief. I got a dance to go to.